Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to start assembling the walls and I'll probably make these videos a little bit shorter so I'll just show assembling the walls and then standing the walls with the algorithm with YouTube. It doesn't like it when it's more than 30 minutes long. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. Everybody, everybody, my daughter, my wife, Miss Wonderful, she always uh, she always uh, says I should make them shorter, so I'm going to try. And I actually found this little, I've got this uh, media mod that I got so I can hook, use the microphone that we talked about in the last video, which I haven't tried yet, but um, I lost this little, this little muff, this clamps on to the microphone portion of the media mod and you can't buy you cannot buy extras of these and I lost it I don't know how it fell off but I just found it I found it uh, right over there in the sand barely I was like wait a minute it was all covered in sand and I even found it so that was a good thing but um, so today I am going to I am going to start assembling the walls and I am going to show you one one mistake that I made well was a mistake but um, what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this front wall um, on he, over here and over on the game room side um, I'm going to do it like I did on the other uh, on the other front two fronts um, I'm going to have that wall go first so I'm going to take uh, three and a half inches or four inches off of each side wall and I'm going to redo the um, I don't have to do too much all I have to do is just add to the end of it um, so I don't have to redo the whole thing other than having to remark it but what I'm gonna do is just turn it around and use this side so that I don't have to wonder which marks are which um, so it's not too big of a deal um, but it will make it much easier as I kind of explained in the last video about how the walls what ones go first if I don't do that it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for me um, take it make take a little bit longer so anyway we've got the chief inspector making sure that I've done everything right as you can see I left the uh, skid steer hooked up to it so it didn't go anywhere and what I always do with those is um, block it up because the hydraulics end up leaking down and uh, we don't need that going anywhere as you can see it did leak down a little bit it's actually lifted it up right misty what do you think is it still okay yeah all right enough of that let's get to work all right that's fixed as you can see so that wall will be first i've relayed it out i just turned it over so the old markings are on the inside because I don't want to get, I don't want to have to get new lumber because it's, as I've talked about before, the lumber is not very good in that pile. So these are good, as good as they, they can be. So that wall is going to be first, that wall is going to be first, and that front wall is going to be first is what I'm going to do right now. And the good thing with doing that is, um, doing it that way um, is, I can turn this wall, you know, I can turn this wall sideways and kind of line them up here so I don't have to get them far. I don't have to put them far out of my way. And all these can just kind of be put in the spot um, where they won't be in the way of the other walls. So you'll see as I do it. All right, so the first thing is you've seen in another video, when you snap your lines, your wall lines, that makes a straight, obviously it's straight. So what I do first is get all the bottom plates on the line and they're toenailed. If you can see, they're toenailed and I try to do them at least every two feet. Um, that, that's a pivot point, as you'll see, that keeps the wall from falling over and it keeps it pretty close to the line. Um, and you do have to adjust it and those nails do get pulled out but not until it's secured and it's up so the easiest way to do that to make sure that you're perfectly on the line when you're toenailing those in is I take blocks and you don't want them to be too big not much bigger than eight inches or so like that and what I do is I I take it and I just screw that down like that 
so that this way I don't have to worry about driving it too far, uh, meaning toenailing it and making it go, go past the line. It just makes it go quicker. You don't have to do that. But for me, it's easier. Uh, I find it's just more efficient. You don't have to worry about it. So what I'm going to do is go around, get all these on the line. As you can see, I started to lay some of the headers out and the things that I had pre-done. I wanted to get this large wall ready to go. I've got building inspector coming tomorrow. So in case I don't have them all done, I want to at least have the, the biggest one done. So you can see again here, this is three windows, but one header. So it eliminates because one this size would need uh, three jacks and three king studs. So that would, there'd not be enough room for it, um, for that to work. Plus it's stronger to do, to do one header. And I'm still going to put, I am still going to put two uh, king studs. But even if you had three or four, you would want to do it this way because you want to be able to nail the header in to the, uh, to the king stud. And then you can add the other ones up against it afterwards. Um, and so basically those are the sills. Now you just fill in. Uh, regular studs and do your uh, I call these the soldiers that hold up the top plate to the header and those are cripples some people call them both cripples but uh, I've never done that and I just think that's dumb to have them both be called the same thing anyway but it's tough you know the soldiers are holding things up right so um, all right I don't know there's too much more to tell you about that I do a double sill. Some people do a single uh, sill. I like a double. And again, you have to do that um, individually so you could nail them. And what you do is I take these down here and I'll put it, I'll put it like that. You know, I'll put it in there like that, get it where it goes. And I mark it so that I don't have to measure when it goes up here. Well, actually it doesn't go that high. This is a six foot window, so it's somewhere about there. But anyway, so that gives you a basic layout um, of what's going on. So there's three windows there. There's a bathroom window. So most of this is just filled in. There's no other windows here, because this is a closet. And this whole front is a closet as well, but there is one window that goes there. So that's, uh, that's a quick way to uh, to get everything moving quickly. <laughs> Quick way to get things moving quickly. Hmm, very good. <laughs> All right, so just a little tip in nailing these together. As I said before, um, you want to make sure that you nail the headers through this way so you can fit the gun. Because if you don't, as you can see, if you don't leave that out, you won't get the gun in and get the nails in straight. And then they're not strong and... I see a lot of people do that. And then what I do for spacing, even though I've marked it out, is I put the sills in so I can, I mark the sill so I don't have to measure anything. And then what I'll do is I'll take that sill after the bottom is all nailed, the studs that is, and I'll put the sill up top so I can mark for the soldiers as well, because this way, um, you'll see, but you know, they're, they're uh, eight inches, 10 inches apart. So rather than get a square or measure it, you can just take the sill and do it that way. So I get all these, I get all the, everything that has to do with the headers in first, and then I can go ahead and um, nail the rest of them. And sometimes I will leave out a stud, not on this, because this is the first wall, but on the second wall, or on a wall that's butting up to it, if there's a stud that's too close to the inside where you're gonna not only nail it, but I use timber screws to fasten my corners together, I, leave, I may leave a stud out until I get them fastened and then toenail the studs in uh, afterwards so that you can get in there. Because again, you don't want to be putting those in on an angle either. All right, and just to show you what I'm talking about, so I'm gonna double up Put two king studs. Even though it doesn't need it, it's still going to make this stronger. This is 
basically this window isn't spanning it's only spanning three feet so it doesn't need it but it's still holding up the header so not that it's holding it up but keeping it shear strength from from flexing back and forth not really shear shear is side to side but anyway so you can see if you don't if i put that one in i wouldn't be able to nail that one so move that keep that one out same thing on this side that double and again, remember, I have the doubles here because I like my sheets to lay out completely. Um, I, I don't like half on, so it doesn't matter inside with sheetrock, but for outside, much better to go full on. And when you're doing cripples like this, the best thing to do is not to nail the bottoms first, get them in place and nail the sill because then they won't bounce on you so just get them where it's going and a lot of times like on this one here this you get a little dip in the floor or where there's a bow in your two by and it will mess things up them in but if you do this then you don't have to worry about them bouncing back out which they will do and you don't want to have your make sure you don't put your hand right near it because if that nail comes through you can see even that bounced out but it won't matter once you do this And I still tow them in as well. And then it gets the second silt. Like that. So that'll be nail in. Now you can nail those in and they don't move. All right, here I am, end of day. I was very lax at turning on the camera. So I didn't, I had planned on the last wall to put together and of course I got interrupted and did it quickly um, without putting the camera on so here's the game room the only thing that's left to do is four by four purlins to go in the center for stiffening um, three windows in here this is this one is done same thing have to do the center blocking large windows they're big they're 37 inches by almost six feet bathroom window another bedroom slash office pantry in the front and then over here i got i got our bedroom it's almost a mirror image of the game room it is the windows are the same got that done except for the blocking I'm gonna do that all at once <clears throat> use different nails for that so um, I got the bottom the bottom is nailed that one is out as I talked about because I didn't nail the header in yet so I don't won't put that one in until tomorrow I've got to go load up the warrior load up the trailer for the warrior but I can't get it out so I've got to get ready to pick it up or to bring it down uh, so they can fix it and this is the closet same monstrous window but it's just for looks in the front but there's a big window in the closet and i just didn't get to put the soldiers in so that'll be tomorrow and that's about it so hopefully i will get some video of of uh well it's not going to be too exciting doing that one i'll make sure i do just in case but um, i'll have the other walls once these get stood then i'll have the other walls and uh, i'll make sure i get a video of how I put them together. All right, good news. Look who's back. <laughs> Only took six months, but I uh, want to thank them at uh, Ori, Counter, or Ori County Trailer and uh, Auto Sales. They really came through, pushed for it, pushed for it. This was covered by warranty, new uh, ECU 
and uh, wire harness and it runs better than it did when I first got it and didn't even realize because I couldn't see it it's got 252 miles on it already only five hours but <laughs> I don't know where I drove around here but happy to have it back thanks to them for getting it done all right everything is squared I didn't video that either Miss Wonderful gave me a hand with this because this wall is hard to do because it's 50 foot 9 on a diagonal so what you do is you measure from that corner to that corner and that corner to that corner and they should be the same and if they're not you move it so let's say it's an inch off so if it needs to go that way it doesn't go that way an inch it goes that way half the distance so it would just be a half an inch whatever it is so and what I also do is I verify it because this is a tough one to do when it's that long um, is I these sheets are 10 foot 10 foot one and a quarter exact same length as the wall so what I do is I I get it to where I think it goes not think but you know what the measurement says then I take a sheet and I put it on and make sure that it fits um, everywhere and it did so if, if not I would adjust it because it's the sheets are perfectly square so at least as perfect as they can be so that's a good indication because if you don't make the wall square it won't be plumb when it stands up so you don't you want to make sure that the wall is square not only will it be hard to put the uh, put the sheathing on as well and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a 4x4 four four block down the middle of this to stiffen the wall because this is a 10 foot wall so rather than some people will do two buys two you know two uh, two by fours and stagger them. I'm just going to put the four by four right down the middle uh, Opposing each other. So that's the strongest way to do it at least in my estimation Oh, and I almost forgot so the double top plate has to go on as well um, In theory, it's best I like to wait until the wall is standing because it's easier to straighten it when that is not on there um, but for the uh, strength of lifting, it's better to have it on. And they will have to get cut because, as I've talked about, there's a wall here. So the wall, the top plate on this wall is going to go all the way to cross over onto this wall. So what I do is I will just cut that out um, afterwards. So what you want to do is make sure that you nail... Um, it's best to nail right over the studs or just a hair off center um, so that you don't hit the other nails um, but this way you don't want to have nails where you're going to be cutting out a wall like that will be cut out uh, here will be cut out here will be cut out there will be cut out and that's it on this wall so those will get cut out and it doesn't matter you don't have to worry if the ends are square or it doesn't have to be any particular length when you're doing it this way like I said just make sure that where you where you're gonna end you know that you're not gonna have nails in the way and sometimes I like to go back to the old-fashioned way of how we reminds me of how we used to do it Remind me that if we still had to do it this way, that I would do something else, <laughs> or would have done something else. Not that I do it now. A little out of practice. All right, all the 4x4 four four purlins are in all the way down. Left the last, the last one out because there's actually another stud that goes right there. But you need to leave that one out so you can 
fasten this one to the other wall. <laughs> so that'll go in after. And what I do, so it's plywood time, and these are the exact, these 10 foot sheets are 10 foot one and a quarter, which is what the three plates work out to be. So what I do with these, you have to go every four inches on the perimeter. So I've marked out four inches all the way around just so that there's no discrepancy. This is a good start. And the field or the center studs are eight inches. Here comes the inspector. Right, Misty? You coming? Yeah, thought so. So what I'll do, obviously I just brought it over with a square so I've got them on both sides. Um, I'll just go every other one and then what I'll do is I'll get the panels down and then I'll snap a line on all of them and then come back and nail it all off, right? That's the best way to do it, right Misty? Yeah. I do on the corners as well is because it's, it's a three stud corner I do the inside and the outside so I'm doing a double row of four inch there as well so that's basically it and I'll show you when I get to a window how I cut them out and so I mark off the bottom sheet first because I, I nail every stud so even even if it's not doesn't need to be so like on a wall nailer where you've got you know, that's really the 16 on center, and that's the 16 on center. But I still, I nail all of them just to make it strong. So I nail, I mark the bottom, I slide it down, I mark the top, and then I snap the lines like you see there. So you can see it there as well. So there's one extra, you know, you get one extra in there, but it doesn't hurt. So we'll be coming to the window, and I'll show that after, but... So I'm going to mark off on this sheet where the bottom is so I know where to drill the hole. And then you'll see I use a router to, uh, to cut it out. Um, so I'll show you that. All right. And here's another often overlooked but very important, very important uh, thing is you want to look to see where your point loads will be coming down from headers. So I've got one continuous header going across there. So basically all the weight is on is on one side, the other side. I mean, it is picked up in the middle um, a little bit as well. So I, am, I just put these two in and I wanted to think of it while I went to go get the camera. But what you want to do is put um, the appropriate size. So a four by four is good for here. I will use four by sixes when I do the... Um, when I do the two by six walls, but because this is a two by four wall, um, this is fine. And so I'm going to put one here and one there, even though basically there won't really be any weight, uh, not really on any of them, to tell you the truth, because this is a gable wall. <laughs> but so it's only holding the weight of itself. But still, yeah, I, I still put them anyway, just um, so figured I'd throw that in there because you don't want to forget it. All right, this is something you don't know how long I've been waiting to do. <laughs> I, I have hated looking in at these ugly floor trusses. Number one, because I can't stand the company of the floor trusses, but it just looks terrible. Um, so <laughs> I didn't even, I was so excited to do it, I didn't even set the camera up. Um, but I've ripped, it's eight sheets to do to the end, so... I will, I'll show you how I do it by ripping them, ripping them by myself when I, I got to rip some more, but, um, I just figured I would, I would show this while, while I just remembered, but, oh, that just looks so much better. And I can't do everywhere because where all the porches are and the outside living. So in the back area and here, well, that little bit, but I'll do this whole thing in here that's all going to be in pressure treated plywood not osb i'm not an osb fan but we'll get into that at another another time 
But yeah, I, I don't care for OSB, never have. So the rest of it will be pressure treated plywood where it counts. All right, this will show you the way that I think is the best way to rip something by yourself. You got a horse just to hold it up, table saw set to go, and you will see you can do it however you want. This is the way that I do it, and this will be in real time because I've got, well, now I've got 11 sheets left in the shipping container. So. Time, two sheets out of one plus a little bit left over get two factory edges that way and if I cut a bunch of them I'll let the saw run for a minute or two just like you would with a turbo to cool the motor down but for one I did not do it um, I've got to redo the setting because um, where the garage is is a little bit different measurement because of the sill this one sits on the sill, not over the sill. But, um, so I've got to take an inch and a half off the measurement. But that's basically how you do it. At least how I do it. Works. I'll just give you a quick shot of nailing it once. It's not too exciting, but I've marked all the trusses, which are three and a half inches wide, so you don't have to worry too much about missing. But I gotta get some cable over here some hose but the nice thing is I've got the I've got the foundation because it's that split block it sticks out in a lot of spots so it holds it up for me so I leave it down my eighth of an inch gap for for expansion and then same thing the four inch uh, you know the perimeter is really only four inch but I just do four inch everywhere and again make sure you don't run out of nails or out of it don't run past the compressor's capacity but this this compressor is doing great if you could get it like i said they did get back to me on it. I should have my microphone on, but they got back to me and said that it should be back in stock soon. So I'll let everybody know when it is. Because it is a good, it is a good buy. All right, that's it. 40 more to go. Probably more than that. All right, this, this portion here, so the front where the concrete is, and all of the back, so all the way down to the game room, to the kitchen, all the way to the pool bath, and partly of our bedroom is going to be pressure treated half inch regular CDX plywood. And you will see why this is so much better. I would, I would have preferred to do the whole house in in uh, CDX. I did David's house all in CDX. Um, they don't, well, they do make it, but it's very hard to get and it's very expensive to get 10 foot sheets in, in uh, CDX. So, you know, they wear me down. <laughs> they, they wear me down with this, with the poor materials and, you know, they make all these stringent uh, codes you know, four inches apart on the nailing. Well, you're gonna hear me nailing this plywood versus you've already heard me nail CDX. CDX is junk, garbage. I mean, it's already expanded from getting wet once, but you'll just hear the sound of the nails and I wish you could feel it um, as I nail it, but it's just so much satisfying 
and I know that this part will be here forever. I can't say the rest of the CDX will be, but um, I mean the rest of the, the OSB, but this CDX will last uh, many lifetimes. Um, so I'll set up the camera and let you hear me nail it up anyway. I gotta mark all the locations of the trusses. Well, that one I can see. Hopefully there's something for that side to lay on so that I can do this easily. You don't even have to gap this as much as you do OSB. I don't know if you could hear it, but I mean, it's just solid. It's just so satisfying to nail CDX. I mean, you can feel that the nail doesn't, doesn't blow through it. I mean, it just, uh, very satisfying, very satisfying. Ten dollars, well, thirty-five dollars versus fifteen. Twenty dollars a sheet, more than the crap. Now again, you don't have to use pressure treated. I'm only using pressure treated here because this is going to have concrete up against it, and it's, you know, it is under roof, but it's still going to have concrete. It will have house wrap and flashing as well, but still. I'll sleep better at night. And I'm still doing the four inch spacing. So there you go. All right, next load to go back over there. I've got my adjustable wall braces so I have four of those and what's good about those is you can especially by yourself you can plumb the wall you get it close obviously and then these have adjustable screw ends so basically you just turn the bar um, and you can put the wall in or out so you can do that by yourself and then get the permanent braces on so it's not like you use those you don't keep them there you just use it to, uh, till you can put uh, permanent bracing on until, you know, until you're done. And um, I've got the two wall jacks, so you'll see those in action. And I have two other jacks um, that I bought, um, which you'll see as helpers. But these are the two good ones. Um, these can do up to a 10 foot 6 wall. So, of course, I have an 11 foot wall, so I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm thinking I can put it on a 6x6, six six, um, and that should work. So, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it all right all the walls are framed and sheathed that i can do on the first lift so here's a look at them there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sheath these i'm going to sheath these i'm going to house wrap these um, i'm using two different kinds one is tipar which is a stronger much more expensive material that i'm going to use on that wall right there just that's going to be in the sun most of the time until i can get the siding on um, and i probably will side that side first anyway because that gets the most weather um, and i'm going to use just regular uh, regular house wrap um, on the other parts especially you know this whole front is going to be under roof all that outdoor kitchen area 
this area is all under roof so it's really never going to get any weather to speak of anyway but um, but I want to I want to see some walls up so I'm going to do these first um, in the front so what I did is they nobody sells three foot rolls down here Lowe's does but they charge as much for a three foot roll as you can buy the entire roll at uh, at the, our lumber yard so what I did is I just cut a three foot I just cut it with the sawzall with a metal blade smooth blade and just cut that off at three feet so three feet will cover the box you know the floor and then it will come up enough because these are 10 foot walls and the house wrap is nine feet so I will snap a line there and um, that will give me my uh, my my both uh, lines to follow and what I do is I tack them up so you'll see it but once I put it down I will leave that three foot part tacked up with a couple of nails and also when I do the sides um, I will I will leave the sides uh, tacked back so they can roll back around the corners all right well i think i'm going to leave the wall the wall framing part uh video here and pick up again where uh where i start to lift them because that this is enough about how to put them together and you get the idea so as usual thanks for watching catch you on the next one and the next one will be exciting of raising the walls and i think miss wonderful is going to help